Guys, welcome back to aldusacademy.net. In this particular video, which is a part of the series on the installation and programming of the Mode MZC system made by Speakercraft, I'll be looking at integrating third-party control systems and as an additional control layer above the MZC. This might be useful for serving the controls up to a, a device such as an iPad via a Bitwise controller. This method of integration will give you two-way control. If you're looking for something a little bit sim simpler and just wish to control it by IR, you can inject IR in via the IR ports on the keypad and control the system itself using IR. However, we wish to do something a little bit more intelligent and have a two-way conversation and actually be able to pull data such as the level of a zone, whether or not a zone is turned on, and which source a zone is listening to, all from the third-party control system which is acting as, a, as an additional control layer. So let's have a look at the actual topology required in order to make the physical connections. And I just want to bring your attention to one or two crucial things that you'll need to ensure in order to make it to work. So here we have the processor of your choice. And it's connected to the RSA1 via a NAL modem RS232 cable. That's because this is two control systems speaking to each other. So the RX and TX cores are crossed over. If the RX and TX cores weren't crossed over, it would be a straight through cable and the communication would not be there. You need to ensure that you have the MZC control interface firmware uploaded onto the RSA1. You can do this via plugging in the, uh, the DB9 adapter, USB to DB9 adapter into the RSA1 and then uploading the firmware via easy tools. Once again it needs to be the control, uh, the MZC control interface firmware that's loaded on. In loading on that firmware, you're automatically telling this RSA1 that it should operate at a board rate of 57600. You need to ensure that your third party controller is operating at the same board rate, otherwise the two will not be able to talk. This is a data centric product, so therefore it plugs into the data bus, also known as the expansion bus. It could plug into the loop or the port. Generally you plug in two MZCs via the port, so usually it will be plugged in via the loop. Please ensure the address is set to zero and that this is the first device in the loop. By the first device in the loop, I mean you might have an iPod dock wired in over here, or alternatively, you might have another RSA1 which is controlling an RS232 device such as a receiver, AV receiver, for example. So in this example, this third-party control system is going to be able to control all the zones. Now let's have a look at the actual programming required to make this work. But before doing so, I just want to point out that there's many different control systems you might be using as a third party control system. Please read the notes of, provided by the Pacific manufacturer of the driver for the control system in question. They may vary slightly in terms of the implementation on the end of the third party. So what I'm going to teach in this lesson is the one which is used most commonly and it's actually starting from a default template which you can download from our site again underneath speakercraft and then useful information and mzc programming software you'll find a file called the default project for third party integration please download this file and open it in easy tools this file is very basic as the control layer on top which is the third party control system will do most of the programming so in order to avoid doing the programming twice we keep the template very basic so that the higher level of control can be done in the third party environment. So without much further ado, let's jump into easy tools where the magic happens and see exactly how we go about programming an MZC to be ready for the third party integration. As you can see it's fairly similar to the actual template which I was using earlier. However, in this template I have not named any of my sources. I have not named any of my zones. This is not necessary. I could name these anything I like because in the third party environment I'm going to have the opportunity to name them and maybe display them on an iPad in a more graphical way. For instance, I might not name my zones. I might have an image of a kitchen for the kitchen. I might have a floor plan layout Therefore, I do not need to label my zones for the end user to know what they are. They'll be able to see on the floor plan exactly which room they're controlling. So, one thing to bear in mind 
is you might be using a third party control system as a replacement for these keypads. So you may not wish to have these keypads in every zone. You may in fact wish to have these keypads in every zone in case the third party control system isn't there or the third party control system is specific to a zone or a set number of zones. So you may wish to program some mode 3.1 keypads in the project so that if the keypad's not if the third party control system is missing then you can still control the system in which case you would want to name your sources so that they appear on the keypad in the correct way but generally speaking you might just program it so that the keypads are in the project but not physically there that is a necessity as it is with when you're programming a mode 3 you need a mode 3.1 in every zone Otherwise, the third party control system will not see that zone and will not be able to control it. So it's crucial that you have a mode 3.1 programmed in every zone. That is how it is in the default project. All that would be required is if I'm doing all the programming from the third party environment, all that would be required is to import this project, maybe change the source to an iPod dock if there's one present, and then upload. The upload process, once again, is MZC and download. This would download the programming onto the device. I can see here that my volume commands are already set and my routing commands are set. That means I am all set. All I need to do is upload this to the device or download it, as the case may be, and then I am ready to start integrating with my third party control system. I need to set the board rate to 57600. But once that's done, as long as it's a now modem cable plugged into the RSA1 via the expansion port, I should instantly have control of this mode MZC system. I can still set events to happen when zones turn on and off. And I can still program things and customize them slightly to my needs. But the point of this video is to demonstrate that there's a template file available from our website, which would greatly increase your speed when it comes to programming. So all that's required is to have zones set up and have sources set up you do not actually require to name them as you can do that from the third party environment other than that the third party integration is fairly straightforward thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon